Hi guys. Okay, welcome to the next video. Okay, I want to show you something really quick that I noticed that God was revealing to me after I made the last video. Okay, He has been telling me for a while to tell you, get off your mat and walk. Alright, now, get off your mat and walk. Guys, mat is mate. Now, I know that you don't have this understanding yet because I have not brought this, this these words to you. But what he is revealing to me about mat, it is your bed. Alright, your mat is you're laying down in death. Alright, you're laying there with the potential for healing. Okay, but when the Lord passes by, Right? His compassion upon you would be to heal you. If it's not the Lord passing by, it will be those with healing ability who will call you up from your place of death and will bring you off your mat. The bed or the mat that you're laying on is your vertical position. If you continue to lie vertically, you build for yourself a tower, all right? But this tower won't have a top. Let me explain. Once you get off the bed or the mat, that place with which you lay, it becomes your tomb, okay? But you must transition over into a place out of your bed chamber. All right. Now, this is not coming out of intimacy. This is coming out of sickness. All right. When you're on your bed, that's your deathbed. All right. That's when your bandage or your binding is around holding in your broken body. When you're able to take off the bands and leave them on the mat and get up. That movement of getting up and walking is bringing you into your path of uprightness. Then you go from this to this. Your new fortress isn't on the ground or on the face of the earth any longer. You are now living with an upright this is the fortress he will rebuild in you. This is the temple. This is what he's torn down. He's tearing this down in three days and building this up. And this is the capstone. This is where you now have your head. But it's not your head. You are getting the head of Christ. All right? This is depicted in Jacob at Bethel. Okay. Bethel, I believe, is Beth. He's telling me is Bath. There's a cleansing of a renewal here. This is baptism. Bath. Bab. Tizzo. But when you are here, you are submerged under the water. You must come up out of the water. All right. You coming up out of the water symbolically, spiritually, dead to your sin, alive to your in your new body. Guys, this is your tomb. This becomes your new womb that you're going to give birth in. This becomes Mount Zion. This can never be Mount Zion. These stones are meant to be broken down and rebuilt. It's the three days. You get off your bed and your mat and you rise and you walk. This was what Jacob did. When Jacob lay down on those on that mat, what did he do? But he had a dream. The dream symbolically showed him the path to heaven and the coming and going was placed upon him. All right? 
when he came to, was revived, what did he do but build an altar of stone as a memorial? Okay? You make a name for yourself, a memorial, a remembrance after your death. It's your eulogy. Others see your dead body and they say, this is where he once laid. All right. If there's no viewing of your body, no eulogy, you're still dead. Okay? You're still dead. You're still in your dead state. You must get off your bed or mat if someone is willing to offer you healing. When you are living in darkness and you are in the prison laying on the death bed that is meant for your destruction, that sin has so easily pulled you into, pulled you into the covers of fear, pulled you into the covers of denying anything that is of Christ, taking away all that is of life, preparing you for your burial. If you are separated from God, the only hope that you will have are the healing hands, mouth of the one that is coming by your tombstone. Visiting your grave. If you have somebody come visiting your grave to bring you healing, you have hope. Through the healing power of others, you get off your healing. You get off your mat. The apostles were given the ability to speak of such things. Do you remember the paralyzed man who had been at the pool? Okay. His only justification of not being able to be healed was he kept waiting to get into the pool. That pool was man's idea of finding the right moment to get it before someone else does to be healed. God doesn't present healing in that way. The man didn't have the ability with his blindness to put himself into the water. His inability was due to his lack of belief. What happened, guys? His state of paralyzed body was because of his own choice to stay from the healing. But hope came for him. This is a lesson for you and me. And wouldn't you know it, my Bible is open to the very page. That is just unreal. 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 It's Luke 5. And it happened, this is two, two instances, the leper and the paralytic. The leper. And it happened when he was in a certain city that, behold, a man who was full of leprosy saw Jesus. And he fell on his face and he implored him saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Well, this man's leprosy was a result of the inside of him. 
What is on the inside is going to show up on the outside. Leprosy, sores. This is an indication of a disease. Okay. Yes, this man is in need of healing. He doesn't have a new body. He can't be upright. And he's living in his sickness. What he does have going for him is that he understands that it is the Lord. And he says to the Lord, if you were willing to do this, then it can happen. All right? All this man can do is hope that somebody else is going to be willing to see him for who he is. He has no power on his own to move. Paralyzed. This is what happens in the state of imprisonment. When you get into that bed, you become immobilized. He put out his hand. This invitation, this invitation of hand. Shut the door, please. He put out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing to be cleansed. And immediately the leprosy fell and left him. And he charged him to tell no one, but he said, Go and show yourself to the priest and make an offering for your cleansing as a testimony, just as Moses commanded. Then we get the paralytic. It happened on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting by, skeptics, who had come out of every town. The power of the Lord was present to heal them. They were there amongst the power, and had they but wanted it, it would have been there for the taking. Behold, men brought on a bed a mat, a man who was paralyzed, whom they sought to bring in and lay before him. And when they could not find a way to bring him in because of the crowd of people, they went on the housetop roof and let him down, him and his mat, through the tiling of the roof and into the midst before Jesus. The location Jesus was in. They couldn't get to him. They went above and came down to find him. When he saw their faith. Why is this faith? They climbed up the mountain. And let down the bed. To bring the bed and the man to the only person they knew would give him healing. They didn't give up when the obstacles were that they couldn't get to him. Their perseverance found a way. And when he saw their faith, all Jesus said is, Man, your sins are forgiven you. Why is Jesus forgiving his sins? It's because he's on, this, on the mat. And the scribes and Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this who speaks of blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God alone? He was God. Man, were they blind. But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answered, Which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven you? Or to say, Rise and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the man who was paralyzed, I say to you, arise, take up your mat, your bed, and go to your house. And immediately he rose up before them. He got up and walked. 
took up what he'd been laying on, departed, and glorified God. Hallelujah. God gets the glory. Coming back with my vision.